A few months ago, I drove out to Kentucky and bought a new motor for my restored bass boat. We got the motor installed and running, but I never found out how fast it actually went. Since a ton of people were asking, today we're gonna find out how fast a 150 horsepower motor will go on a 1996 bass boat. Do you remember this thing? A lot of you guys have been asking about it. Today, we're in the Bass Cat, and I thought it'd be fun to get out on the water and show you guys everything that I love and hate about this boat, but also to speed test it. A lot of you guys were asking when I put the new motor on there, how fast this thing goes, how it rides in general. So today, we're gonna do a little fishing. We're gonna do a little testing with the Bass Cat for you guys here at home, and if you guys are OGs, to my channel like you really started watching this channel early on you'll know that i kind of got my start musky fishing so we're at the old stomping grounds we're going to try and run some figure eights maybe catch a couple fish and then we're going to see how fast this thing actually goes welcome back it's good to see your face let's hit the water Alrighty, folks we got you on the gopro we're going to go ahead and we're going to fling some big lures for some big fish you know the deal this is just nostalgic for me hopefully we boat a few fish and then we'll do our speed test So the fishing wasn't too hot, but we casted our butt off and eventually I linked up with a fish. Fish, 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 fish. Hot, hot, hot. I got him. Oh, he came off. Dang it. Of course the GoPro was turned the other way. Okay, so fishing wasn't so hot. We ended up getting into one muskie and it popped off in front of the boat. It's a beautiful day to be out here and what you guys came here for was the bass cat. I've been getting a ton of comments asking about how I like this boat so far, how I like the sea deck, just a bunch of questions that you guys want answered. So I figured we'd get out here now that I've used the boat for an entire season, we can give you my overall thoughts on what I think of the bass cat I built. So I know you guys are gonna be surprised to hear this, but I'm not a huge fan of this boat as much as I thought I was gonna love it. Originally when I bought this boat, it was like a dream boat in mind. I spent a lot of time in Wisconsin at Sturgeon Bay fishing for smallmouth in a bass cat Pantera, and it was awesome. At that time, I thought I really badly wanted a bass cat at this particular time after fishing out of one for a whole season. I think the boat is great, but it's not everything that I wanted in a boat. The number one reason, why do I hate it so much? The storage sucks. Storage box number one, we have the rod locker. I like the rod locker. I don't have a ton of complaints. It gets the job done, give or take that this boat is a 1996. I'm sure they weren't thinking that far into storing rods. I can fit a lot of rods in there and if I have the rod socks on, we're good to go. So my biggest complaint is not with the rod locker, it's mainly with the tackle storage. In this entire boat, I have three places where I could potentially store tackle. One being here, here, and maybe here. What this guy is, is a cooler. This is made for your drinks, ice, whatever that may be. Tackle storage is super important. If you guys are like me and you bass fish, especially fishing tournaments, tackle storage is important. And this boat definitely limits me to how much tackle I can bring. So not only do I have two places left to store tackle, but I have to store everything else in the boat. Anchors, life jackets, all the legal requirements, ropes, you name it, it has to go somewhere and that alone takes up a ton of room, which all that stuff goes right here. I have my certified throwable, my emergency stuff, the anchor, et cetera. This pocket pisses me off the most because no matter what I do, I cannot keep water out of it. Literally check this out right now. Do you see how much water's in here? It's ridiculous. That water comes from the trolling motor recessed foot pedal right here. There is a hole in the front that I have to keep plugged. That plug drains down into this compartment and gets all my stuff wet. And the best part is there's no way to drain it. I have to stick a towel in there or a like sub pump, something in there to just pump the water out. I've pretty much just given up on it. I just deal with having wet life jackets. This leaves me with one place to put tackle and that is this guy right here. Oh, well, would you look at that? I have my dry life jackets in there. So given that this is really the only place that I can put tackle, it's not even a full compartment. It has half the boat protruding through it. It's not flat. When I try to put my Plano boxes in there, they don't fit in there organized. I pretty much just have to shove them in there. And then in the back of the boat, you have the two live wells. I love the live wells. They're massive. All the tournaments I've fished, I've never had an issue. And then last but not least, people have been asking me a ton about the Amazon 
cheap EVA foam or what you guys know as Sea Deck. This stuff's amazing. I, I got nothing bad to say about it. As you guys know, I paid like $60 a sheet for it, which was super, super cheap. The glue has held up great. They stuck on. I literally haven't changed a single thing since I put them on. And when it gets dirty, I just power wash this thing and all the dirt comes right off and goes down to the drain. So given that I chose a lighter color, I was a little nervous because it's gray and white. I thought it was just going to get stained and gross, but it's held up pretty good. We've fished an entire season. Actually, yeah, so like we're close to having the Sea Deck on here for almost a year. I fished almost every weekend this entire season and it hasn't chipped, ripped or anything like that. So I have nothing bad to say about the EVA foam so far. I definitely recommend it. So now you guys have been asking about the 150 Merc that I put on it. As you guys know, I drove out to Kentucky, bought this thing completely redone from a guy. I was skeptical if it was gonna be enough power or not. Some people said this thing should go like 70 miles an hour trimmed up. And some of you guys said it's not gonna be enough power. So I've been using it all season. It's been getting the job done, but today we're gonna officially see how fast it actually goes. I have no idea. I don't have a speedometer on here. I just have a tachometer. Maybe you guys guess in the comment section right now how fast you think it's gonna go. I don't think it's gonna go faster than 45 miles an hour. That's just my guess, but maybe it does. I'm not really sure. I haven't really turned the jack plate up or trimmed the motor up to really get this thing chime walking, not really trying to crash, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put on our kill switch and uh, see how fast we can get this thing to go. Best thing about this boat is I can just do this. That mercury fires right up. Nothing like a two-stroke mercury. Well, one that runs right for that matter. Okay, so we have a speedometer on our phone. Right now it says we're rolling at six miles an hour. That's probably pretty accurate. I'm gonna screen record it and throw it on the screen for you guys to follow along. And uh, we'll see what happens. I'm really curious. I don't think this thing will get up above 45. That's my guess, but I guess we're gonna find out right now. So we're about to be out of the no wake zone and this thing gets up on plane pretty good. Alrighty, here she goes. We're on plane like that. 11, 12, 18, 20, 25, 20, 30. Okay, we're kind of hauling. 32. I'm honestly kind of scared to trim it up. This already feels fast. So I'll be honest with you guys. I did not trim the jack plate up a ton, nor did I trim up the motor. It feels really fast. Like, I don't know if this speedometer is accurate or not. Like right now it says we're going four and I'd say that's probably pretty accurate. But honestly, like, I don't want to chime walk this thing, but 35 is not that fast. What do you think? Do you think it's, maybe we should try it again? I don't know, 36 was the highest we got up to. So, all right, we'll give it, we'll let her eat one more time. I mean, I'll trim it up a little bit.
36. I thought it'd go way faster, I'll be honest with you. How much higher could I have went with the jack plate? I don't know, I don't know how that stuff works. I guess it could have went a lot higher. Not, I mean, not really, but how, like. So we were super skeptical if the phone speedometer was actually accurate. We don't have any windshields on the Bass Cat, so when you're on a boat, sometimes you just feel like you're going way faster than you are due to the fact that you have like the convertible effect. Now that we're in the car, we're gonna put the phone next to my truck speedometer and see how accurate this thing actually is. So if you guys can tell, it's honestly really accurate. I cannot believe that it is accurately reading that well for a phone. It's like, it's almost dead accurate. So there you guys have it. We did a little speed test today. We did a little walk through on the Bass Cat. It's a nice boat. It's not my dream boat like I thought it was. I'm happy with it. It was a great way to get experience for me to do the next boat. That's just the best way I could put it. Another thing that drives me nuts that I'll point out so you guys could see is we never figured out that automotive clear coat issue. I've just been slowly letting it go. At the end of the day, I'm like, whatever. It gets me on the water. I fish tournaments in it. But unfortunately, it did not pretty up like I thought it would. So there's my thoughts. I would like to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below. I have a love-hate relationship with the boat. That's about all I can say. There's some things I love about it. There's a lot of things I dislike about it. I'm excited to get into the Stratus for the next one. And uh, it was just a great learning experience. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I thought it was cool to kind of just kick back and give you an overview on my overall thoughts on this boat since I built it. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I know a lot of you guys watch the boat series. If you have any other questions, let me know. And we'll see you guys in the next one back at the Stratus.